Hi, welcome to Two Sides. My name is Elisa. I'm Perla. And today we're talking about parenting. Okay, so here's a quick disclaimer. I, we, both of us, we do not have kids. Okay, I know this might sound a little odd, but we're going to be talking about our parents and siblings because I have quite a bit of them. So trust me when I can tell you, I've been through the hoops. Yeah, this is more like for the future. Yeah, so think about it. Really think about it, especially because targeted audience are teenagers and like early adults. So also should should state. I don't want kids. And I want like 10 of them if I could. If I can afford them, I'm going to keep having them, by the way. Just look at my eye. Okay. So then let's start off. Now that that is out of the way, it's perfect. We come from very different families. I was raised for several years under a single mother, which is a single parent household. And I have a nuclear family. One mom, one dad, two little brothers. I am the oldest. So we want to talk about how this is completely different. You got to understand... I grew up where my mother had to work several jobs to be able to keep me fed and well raised. I saw my mother come in, come in from cleaning a hotel and change out her uniform to go work at an onion factory. And it's quite different to put that perspective. You don't get much of a childhood. I didn't get that tooth fairy experience, that Santa Claus. I did get things. I'm not gonna lie. My mom tried her hardest to get me everything she could get me. She was 100 percent at trying at her best it just wasn't what you would think of a regular family and i did not have a permanent home to stay at until it was i want to say at least eighth grade (laughs) we stayed with family my father worked because well again the man usually works he didn't want my mom to work and we did struggle a lot we still tried for christmas but most of my gifts came from aunts and uncles and relatives. I didn't ask for much because I was the oldest and I knew what was going on. I decided then and there that I'd be kind of like the third parent because I didn't want to stress my parents out and I kind of just assumed that role, especially being female, you automatically assume that role. And so, I helped took care of my brothers. I did this. I didn't ask for many stuff. If you would ask me, I'd be like, oh, I'm fine with this. I probably wasn't, but mm, I, my parents loved me. I know they do. And they tried their best, and sometimes things were very hard. And I would see my parents in the middle of the night when they thought I was sleeping. I could hear them worrying over money, worrying over yeah. finances, worrying over work crying, worrying, and I started to worry too. And that's just the way you get raised. If you, whichever household you come from, again, my mom, she may have not had much, but she definitely tried. I would see her at one point before we met my stepfather, we would live on top of a little hill and it was right next to an onion factory where she would work and she would make sure to get there on time to be in the conveyor belt, conveyor belt next to the window and we would have walkie talkies because that then there wasn't phone. I'm that old. And we would see each other through the glass. And I would do my homework through the glass because and she would tell me, hey, did you eat? And I'll be like, yeah, because most times she would be gone when I was up and she wouldn't come back until I was tired. So we wouldn't really get that. So we definitely come from very different nuclear families. But that, how to explain it, it doesn't mean that certain raising didn't come out because we both come from his- Hispanic families. So we are afraid of the chancla. <laughs> you understand if you're Mexican, you be afraid of that chancla. You be afraid of that vara, that chancla, <laughs> and that mano. Yeah, you get hit quite a bit if you're a Mexican. You have to learn to not be spoiled. I was a little spoiled growing up, not going to lie, but once you're older, they will hit you. They will definitely hit you. Yeah, I learned to very much value things, especially since my va- family is very old-fashioned in yes. the ranch we hand make things we hand make tables we're like oh our family like oh no we'll buy a new one it's like oh no we'll make a new one yeah. and i'm like excuse me we're doing what now <laughs> and it, and we come from that kind of family which again surprises me because a lot of young parents nowadays or a lot of parents nowadays my favorite thing to bring up is the spanky debate oh jesus people that do not spank their kids I know right now, again, I'm not a parent, but I had siblings and my dad told me and I feel it now that I'm older because I have a I have a wonderful family now. And I'm proud to say that I have four siblings, two boys, two girls. And 
my dad spanks them and it would hurt when I first got this family seeing that why are you hitting my brother and I never got it until I was older I'm like because you need to straighten them out it's not gonna be child abuse unless you're leaving purple marks yes that's child let's abuse. reiterate it. spanking on the thigh or on the butt not on the face not on the arm not with a closed fist not with jewel no it's on the thigh on the butt yeah that kind of spanking minimal just so they can know you know what i did something wrong pain no 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 doing it again and you might think that's crazy but don't let your child get away with it you're not okay he listen to this you're not their best friend you are or their, their parent. parent dude please i do not care you are their best you're not like to be oh mija, mijo you know i want them to be my best friend tell me everything darling they're not going to tell you everything no matter how much of a best friend you think you are they're not going to tell you oh please if you're watching this video you can probably give me five things in like less than a minute that you did without your parents knowing mm -hmm. and it's just like if you want them to tell you shit just Open arms. Just always be there. Always open be arms. open. I mean, get mad at them for like stupid stuff that they do, yeah. like going out on a bender on a school night, coming home drunk and shit. Yeah. But like, no, it's just like if they're there with like a problem, don't judge. Don't open your mouth. Zip it and listen. Yeah, because understand you are not their friend. Their friend is the kind that says chug, chug, chug. And you're the parent that's going to get their ass out of the freaking jail at like four in the morning because they got caught. You are not their best friend. Please understand that. So yes, discipline your kid, spank your kid, because if you let them get away with it now, can you imagine when they're 15? Can you imagine when they're 20? Their life is, you're not doing them a favor by giving them everything. You're, you're, again, I was spoiled for a while. And when life hit me, life hit me hard. It came in crashing. Yeah, and I had like a military regiment here. <laughs> Yeah. I had to tell my parents. I still tell my parents everything where I'm going. Yes, I'm going out. Yes, I'm doing this. No, I'm not doing that. No, no, I can't. And going by that notion, uh, how strict should one parent be here? That depends on the parent and on the child. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I, both of my brothers, I have two brothers, and I'm glad to say, thank God, both of them are angels when it comes to following the rules. But I know for sure, give your child a step-by-step. -step. Understand that. Trust is something that needs to be earned. If they can, if they do not come home by nine do not trust them to come back home by 12. You, you, you know your child as a parent us coming from different parents they knew me they knew that i could come back home if they told me you know what i want you back home by 10 i was home by 10 home by 10 and the next time it was 11. so you that is more of a you do your child accordingly you will know your children just like you know your siblings, just like you know your friends. You know what friend can take it, you know what friend can't. And trust goes both ways, which means do not look through your child's diary or laptop for private things. You want to know the quickest way for your child not to tell you anything? Do that! Yeah, don't. They'll be ready if they're ready, man. They'll, they'll be ready if, if whatever they wanted. And you, if you're a child and you want to talk to your parents, just careful remember they're your parents they're gonna love you no matter what most of them hopefully i pray to god that yes but again they are not your best friends you cannot they are there to make sure that you survive they are there to make sure that once they are gone you are a decent human being that's what being a parent is all about being a parent is by making sure that you raise this tiny human being just equally if not better than you and if you don't like your parents because honestly i did not like everything about my biological mother don't be like them just don't be like your parents whatever you didn't like from your parents learn from that and do better and sometimes you may think that you hate your parents or something guess what they have a reason so wait until you grow up to make that choice look back right now at all the conversations that you have ever had with your parents Look back at those times where you were mad and furious at them and yelled at them and reflect on it now that you're an adult and you're going to see that you were a little shit. <laughs> you probably were a little shit. Let's be honest. Most of us were. Most of us threw tantrums at the store because we didn't get a candy. We didn't get a toy. And some people now at this age, you can probably relate. I've seen a lot of people here in college throw a tantrum because their parents lowered down their spending money to like 500. And I'm like, darling, that's like, <laughs> do you understand that for a lot of us that's a lot and yeah. you 
So please put yourselves in that respect, like perspective of your own parents. They're trying to give you everything of the world. Call them every once in a while. <laughs> it wouldn't kill you. Trust me, it wouldn't. And again, I know some of them are not the best parents, and I get it. I, I definitely get it. My mom at one point left me for her current husband. It was a tough choice to make, but now as an adult, I get it because one day I was gonna grow up, and I was gonna leave my mom. Guess what? He's gonna be with her. She's not gonna have anyone else, so she has a husband now, which is pretty much great. Differences, your family's different. Yeah, mine. We put the kid first. Um, I get. I don't have the best. When it comes to relationships, especially in my family, the women usually get the short end of the stick, and I have seen many of relationships where they choose their husband or their spouse before their children, and the children suffer. Yeah, and see, and mine's different. We believe that that if you and your spouse are good, so let's obviously I'm not saying stay with someone that's going to treat you like shit. Don't. Don't do that. Because then that's just worse for the kids. But... If you have to pick at one point in life, five minutes, just five minutes, that's all it takes to say hello to your spouse and actually talk to them, that will help your family a lot more than if you give five extra minutes to your kids. I know it sounds wrong, but your spouse is human too. And sometimes just spending that extra five minutes can make a difference. And if your kids see a healthy mom and dad or a healthy mom, mom, healthy dad, dad, healthy whatever, or a healthy single parent, if your kids see that, they will be fine because there's nothing worse than a mom and dad being stressed because your child has practice, ballet practice, soccer practice, whatever practice you have, extra school activity, and you're stressed and you're fighting and you're bickering, guess what? Now the kid thinks that that's normal and or why are mommy and daddy fighting? And, but like, sometimes you're gonna have to pick the kid. As much as you love your spouse, sometimes you're gonna have to pick the kid. It that's just needs to be said because I know there's people that are still in love with their spouses and stuff and like sometimes it looks like they're much more above than you because I've seen it happen. No, yeah, and it times. definitely does happen, but that comes, that's a whole different monster of just make sure you're evening out the playing field because I know there's people who take their children to an extreme. And you do gotta understand, there's only, in a relationship, there's no such thing as 50-50. There is no such thing. Someone is gonna give more. One of your mom and dad, and you'll see it, think back. If you come up from a double parent household, think. Think who did a little bit of extra clothes because someone did an extra shift at work. There's always gonna be that thing. There's always, it's never 50-50. So if you believe in 50-50 relationships, I'm sorry. Whenever you find one, document it because you're probably the first one in the world. It's not the way it works. Someone's always giving more. Exactly. So when your parents, when you see this, when you become a parent, you're going to have to give more. So don't, don't get mad. Oh, and bigger question, single parents, quick FYI, I'm just going to drop that in there. If you're dating a single mama or daddy, get your shit together. You ain't their priority. They got a kid that they got to raise. You are not their priority. Please understand that. You, they, they have enough raising one child. They don't need to raise another one. <laughs> Please understand Did that. Did you see that guy in like uh, Burger King? Which one? The one that like he was dating that single mom and she brought her kid and he was mad that um, he didn't get more attention than the child she oh, had. Oh yeah, I saw, I went to a, a restaurant actually, it wasn't Burger King, it was a restaurant and they were talking and I thought they were talking about their son and then it, the guy, the grown ass male, 30 years old decides to say, but I need your time too maybe we can send the kid with his dad. And I was just like, you're kidding me, right? You're a grown ass man fighting with an eight year old over attention. How childish are you? Yes, I get it that sometimes you might need a little love, but you chose to date a grown ass woman that has a kid. And thank God the girl was like, no, I got a kid. Like you knew what you signed up. She got a kid, she got a job, she got a car. She don't need you. You're just extra. You are the extra fruit that she just indulged herself in or himself in because they single dads out there holla at the single dads. For real. So if you end up being any of those, don't, don't worry about it. You'll be great. Just there's different kinds of families. There's different kinds of nucleus. Do not, how do I say it? 
do not think that one or the other is the best way because we're a perfect example. Very liberal. I was given everything, like all the time in the world. You want to go somewhere? Oh yeah, you go. As long as I had, as long as I told them where I was, free, completely and free. Mine. They had to meet the parents. They had to know where the address <laughs> is. They had to know their salary, social security <laughs> number. <laughs> They With have, all their things. I had to be monitored because my parents, every parent before their child is always a new parent. And I was their first child. So they, and I was female. So I, they were extra, extra cautious. They're still extra cautious because I'm the female. I'm the oldest. I am their first child. They're just they were worried and I get that now when I was younger I was a little mad and I'm kind of a little mad now but I understand that they were just worried and they wanted the best out of me and they did they because they would watch the news and see all these children getting kidnapped and killed they didn't want that to happen to me they don't want that to happen to you and every parent's different again so especially new generation parents Okay, I've seen this, and please do not do this. If you're a teenager, if you're any kind, if you're a college student, do not give shit to other parents. Please do not, because you don't know the hardship they're going through. I did not know this. My, I got my two brothers when they were older, but my two sisters, I got them from scratch, like from babies, babies, and it is so hard to raise a child. And I didn't even raise them full time. You gotta understand that. So if you see a mom having a hard time in the grocery store, do not give her a stank face because that can probably be you one day. You don't know. Every parent raises differently. If that mom wants to freaking give her child a bottle until she's like four, let her. If that's what, if that's the only flaw, every child's going to have a flaw. If that's their flaw, namaste. You get what I mean? It's not hurting anybody. You just don't give parents stink eye because kids are unpredictable. Kids are allowed to have bad days. Also, like, teen parents, they're still babies. They're still learning. Don't give them stink eye. Help them. They're still children. They're still growing. They need all the help they can get here, man. So if you're, like, a teen parent and you see all this, you just understand there's some of us that really get you. I Because I've taken care of my sisters long enough at the store. I've taken both of them to the store. And this is the most difficult thing in the world, keeping eye of two toddlers. If you have more than two for one person, you will go crazy. I've seen it. And even then, I have like two brothers. Uh, one's like two years old, younger than me, and one's the other eight years younger than me. And even though we're the same range, I still have to like round them up because they keep getting distracted because they were younger than me, so they got a little bit more spoiled. So I'm like reining them in, even to this day, just making sure they like eat, sleep, study, do this, do that. If they're bullied, it's difficult. And it is, so please just understand where these people are coming from. If parents, at first I would be like, why would you give your child so much screen time? You get what I mean? Oh, that's so bad for their eyes, that's bad for this, that's bad for that. Because sometimes they ain't got time. It's, the, it's between picking out all the groceries or chasing your child because it's crying and then people, give you a stank face. You cannot be giving someone, they're not in control of their child sometimes, especially if they're young. Unless a child starts developing full sentences, for me, they're not ready to understand yet. So yeah, you can try, but they're not gonna learn. Quick tip, if you ever wanna put a kid in timeout, it's one minute for every year they are. Every, everything else they'll forget. Just don't bother. If they're three and you give them like 10 minutes timeout, they forgot why they were in the timeout. They just, they started daydreaming. They're probably playing with a rock. They're not going to care. <laughs> Obviously they're not. Yeah. And like discipline is different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Again, there's the spanking debate. Then there's taking away stuff because sometimes certain things don't work. Sometimes kids need to be spanked because just taking away something ain't going to work. Yeah. Or some kids, they can just go with taking away something. It's all different parenting styles. There's, well, lie, there are some bad parents out there, but the majority yes. of them are trying. The majority of them try, especially the younger generation. If you are a young parent, I hope you're trying your best. And if yes, I hope your life's going as much as you can for you. So if you ever see a young par parent, just give them a hand. Trust me, they will appreciate it. Help them with the groceries. Just help them something. Even help them with their taxes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Honestly, it's not that hard. It's not. One time, this poor lady at HEB, she she looked young. She looked like 20, like 22. She looked around my age and she already had three kids. That to me, poor lady. And honestly, the balloons were like 50 cents. So I bought each kid a balloon and they shut up. And the lady looked like she had never had the best day of her life. Just the littlest thing will help them. Just please help them understand their parents. Your parents have to go there. And one day you'll have to go through that and you won't sleep and you won't eat because your kids come first. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And don't think that this is a thing to pressure you into being a parent. You can be a parent whenever you, you want. want to. There are some people yes. who don't become parents until they're like 50. Yeah, and it works, especially with today's like technology. You can, live, and if you don't want to be a parent, all power to you. You don't have to. You don't, don't have to have kids. They don't have to be yours. They could be a dog or you can adopt some because there's more than enough kids to go around. Trust me, I've seen the foster system. Just, just no. So do your thing. Do whatever it be that you want to do. Have kids, don't have kids. Thank your parents. They had you. I know some, some of parents you might be hearing and you're like, my parents are shits. I get it. But they still had you and you wouldn't be here without them. So still thank them. Yeah. Especially your just, mom. <laughs> thank you for being, giving birth to me. Thank you for raising me. Uh, thank you for getting me to at least this point in my life. It doesn't have to be much, man. And they don't even have to be your biological parents. Like I said, I have my biological mother and I have my parents now. And they're not, they're not biologically. My mom did not give birth to me. And my siblings are not siblings of mine. But, you know, everybody, every family is different. And sometimes my parents don't really get where I'm coming from because I'm just their kooky child that does weird things. And it's going into the English program and writing stuff but they love me and it doesn't kill me to call them every once in a while man if you're a texting person shoot them a text emojis emojis work fine if parents don't know if your parents are those kind of old-fashioned that still can't read a text message emojis emojis will be your best friend send like a gift five minutes guys it's not gonna kill you you probably scroll more on instagram on the toilet we know this i've seen it i've seen it i've heard it the toilet stalls people on instagram call your mother <laughs> and also your father <laughs> or your grandparents call somebody <laughs> thanks thank you it's for good thanks for watching click our logo to subscribe or click one of the videos for more from the paisano leave a comment letting us know your thoughts and what you'd like to see us cover next